thank you for joining us for our fifth episode of our May series. So this is computer aided design product visualization. So as ever, if you have a question, please ask us below in the comments. Uh, we've got a Q and A section, and this is being recorded and will be on YouTube soon. So my name is Ellis Marshall, and I have the pleasure to introduce Jordan Strachan. Thank, Thank you, you, Ellis. Good morning. I'm Jordan Strachan. Today I'll be discussing how to best visualize the design for a specific reason. The three topics I'll be covering today are rendering, engineering drawings, and virtual reality. Here at the Aura Innovation Center, we can produce high resolution images of our CAD designs. Here is the model we produced last week. That video is now available on YouTube. So as you can see, I can add different textures to individual parts or faces to help display what the final product will look like. So as you can see, I'm using different plastic textures as this part was 3D printed. And I actually have the final model here. And this is what we're going to be visualizing today in virtual reality. So here's a different kind of um, textures. It doesn't have to be the exact materials we're using. This is just to visualize what the product will look like finally, not how it will actually function. So now we have all these textures added. I'm going to add this key ring to a pedestal to add to the scenery that we are producing. Adding a background can also really help a design stand out. And the image I'm about to add now is an image of our workshop. As you can see, it, we can now move this into position to make sure it looks like it's actually in, or as close to in the image as we can through an actual render. We then have to add a light and orient it correctly to get a realistic as possible lighting to match of our background. So it all just looks seamless in our final image. Renders, they are still 2D images. It's like taking a photo, a snapshot of a moment in the CAD drawing. So taking that in mind, we have to add a camera to capture it. So here I am adding a camera. Cameras can be fixed to the model or floating, depending on how you want the image to look. In the, this case, I'd like the model to be in the center of the picture. So I'll make sure the camera is fixed to the model. So I'm maneuvering the camera um, in, into position this is to make sure that the, the images that we're going to be seeing at the end of this will look like it's, it's in the room as close to as possible anyway. Um, and we, the images when we fully render them will not look like this. They'll look a lot higher resolution, more high resolution, which we'll get to later on. So now that we have the camera fixed, we can then start a final render. This can take a long time depending on how detailed the model is and the level of resolution we want to achieve. This render has been set to the highest resolution and took just over 30 minutes to produce this clean image. So you can see it doing its rendering process. And as you can see where it reaches the more detailed parts, it takes a lot longer to render. And then just the background doesn't take long to render. It's just the high resolution parts. So. Here is the final image. This is what we get out of it, the final render of this project. You can see it looks very detailed. And we, can all, we also have a few other renders. Um, this is, you can just have it with a plain background and additional features to get a clearer view of what we're actually making. And here are a couple of other renders I've produced for clients. These are a great, great way to get people interested in a product and also better understand how the final product will look. So we're now gonna stop here to answer a few questions and take a poll. So yeah, please um, please answer the poll. So um, Jordan, do you want to say the question? Um, yes, how likely would it be for your business to utilize high resolution images for proof of concept? A bit, somewhat, a lot. Brilliant, and then we just got one question here. So how long does it take to do the rendering? So the rendering depends on the image. So the more detailed an image is, the higher the, the, higher the rendering is gonna take. Um, same with the resolution. So like you just saw, this is a fairly simple looking model. So, and it took 30 minutes for a high resolution, which isn't that long of a time. If you've got, if you've got a lower resolution, it could take minutes. If you've got more complex parts with higher resolutions, it could take days. So it all depends on what you want to actually um, visualize. Okay, so 
a lot of you are interested in just a bit of of renders, which is which is good to see. Um, so yeah, that's. So we're now going to move on to engineering drawings. So I'm not going to go through how we can produce engineering drawings so that a manufacturer can easily interpret a design to accelerate the manufacturing process. We first take a CAD model we've produced and open each component in drawings. The best way to display the model is through third angle projection. This is where we can see we can see clearly different views of the component, which can then which we can then add dimensions to that can easily be interpreted by a manufacturer or a client that needs to actually manufacture this. As you can see here, I'm adding the different dimensions to every section of the component that requires them. We need to make sure that the dimensions do not overlap each other. This is so that they can be easily identified by a manufacturer. It's also good practice to not duplicate dimensions. So for example, we only need dimensions on one side of this as the line on the other side is the exact same distance. The dimensions include lengths, thicknesses, and also hole diameters. We can add a bit more detail to how the final product component should look by editing the sheet format. This tells the manufacturer what material the component needs to be made out of, the finish of the product. So for example, in this one, the finish is polished and the material is beechwood. Um, who designed the component? So they know who to refer back to if any questions need to be answered. And also when was it last modified to ensure that we're all working on the same page? You can also add weight if we know the weight of the product as well. If you don't, it's not too much of a problem. Um, scale of the sheet is also written on here as well. So it's a good idea. It's, it shows um, the manufacturer that, yeah, this is not to scale. And that it'll all look correct once it's finished. If there is detail on one side of a component and on the other, it's best to view the side where all dimensions can be added. For example, this component has four holes in one side and not the other. So we need to flip the part over to get all those, to get the correct view. Again, it's good practice to make sure that dimensions are not repeated on a component to avoid the drawing to be cluttered with numbers. It may look like I'm missing certain dimensions, but if you can add or subtract two dimensions together to obtain another dimension, and that other dimension is not needed. Again, I'm going to add the same material as this is, this is a, a model of a chair, um, which is to, the model itself is to scale. We just had to scale it down for the drawings as these will then be sent off to the manufacturer to get produced. So yeah, these, these images, they can be saved in any sort of format, including PDF. So they can be opened by anyone. It's very straightforward. Um, if we do need to change the scale of a component to fill the page, you have to remember to change the scale in the sheet format as well. This is to avoid confusion with the manufacturer as it may look, it may look like it's the wrong size. As you can see here, I'm going to change the scale here um, to more, better fill the page to get more of that detail in there to make it easier for the manufacturer to interpret and also so the, the dimensions do not look too cluttered. So it's always good to add an assembly image as well to show how the final product will look. So in this final slide, I'll be showing how to do that. Well, I would be showing just me adding the rendered image, not the, the, the drawing of this image. We're now going to go into a, another poll and answer a few more questions. So yeah, th this poll then is, uh, how do you currently prepare engineering drawings? 
So do you do it in-house, externally, or do you require um, assistance in this area? Brilliant, then I've just got one question for you, Jordan. Um, how long does it take to make these engineering drawings? So engineering drawings, it's more of a formatting um, problem rather than a CAD problem. Oops, let me pause this. Um, so it, it, it depends on how complex the image is. Again, if it needs a lot of dimensions, it's going to take a lot longer. Um, these drawings didn't take me too long. It took me about 20 minutes to produce these drawings, which isn't long at all. But for a more complex drawing, it could take a few hours or maybe, well, yeah, a few hours is probably about average, I reckon, to, um, for more complex assemblies, especially ones that require a lot of components. So going into our final topic today, this is displaying a CAD model in virtual reality. 100% uh, said in-house, so that's, that's good to see. Um, so the CAD package we use here already has virtual reality built into it, meaning every design I produce is already set up to be viewed in virtual reality. Virtual reality is a great tool to help clients visualize a product. We can now view these CAD models in a way that accurately shows us the scale and function of a product that can easily be understood and interpreted by anyone, any person. So as you can see behind me, on the video, I'm in front of a large screen, which is in our meeting room. This is a great way to display what a person is seeing in our virtual reality to a group of people. So you could be in a meeting and you want to show a, a, a prototype that's not being produced yet to try and get across the idea of the product. Um, we can offer that space and we can, we can um, offer the headsets as well. We can scale components, connect different components together and freeze them in midair and rotate them, which is a great way to visualize all the different aspects of a product from every single angle. Virtual reality takes into account every angle of the product. We can also walk around the design in a 3D space, which is great for large assemblies, big complex machinery that, that have different um, areas around the part of around the assembly. So you can see what it looks like from every different angle, see how it all assembles, see that all in a way that is as close to real life as possible without actually manufacturing the parts. Yeah, virtual reality is just, it's an incredible tool for product visualization. It's, it really does help get across the point of different products. And it's a great way to just demonstrate to anyone how a product uh, assembly is going to work. It's very clear through virtual reality how um, something's going to function and how it's going to look. It's hard to look on a 2D screen and sort of look at what the size of this, this thing is going to be. But with through virtual reality, we can see that firsthand before we actually make it, how big it's going to be and how it's going to look. It's, it's just, it's a great tool for visualization. So as you can see here, I'm scaling and freezing parts in midair. And there's, this is all the stuff that we also rendered. This isn't our rendering. This is a virtual reality model. So we can also use it for educational purposes. Here's a CAD model of a human body I designed. These organs can, as you can see here, can easily be removed from the body itself, it can be viewed in any angle, and then it can be put back or put somewhere else to get a better view of how the organs fit together. So as you can see, I'm putting it on this, this table, different parts of this body. So this is actually a um, going to be a physical model. So it's it's it all need it was also a good way to see how the parts assembled before we actually built it to make sure everything does fit together and everything will go together when it's put when it's finally assembled and how it will actually function. So the point of this model was to show organ transplants and how we remove well how, what organs can be removed and it's just it was an educational tool and we can use both the virtual reality model 
and the physical model for both educational purposes. It doesn't have to be educational. They, it could be, we could do training or um, assemblies of different large um, machineries so we can get, so people can get familiar with a, a design before it's even manufactured. You could, you could be prepared for actually manufacturing something through virtual reality, through the assembly. It's, it's, um, it's a great tool for both visualization, but also training and understanding how a product works, which again comes into that banner of visualization. But we can also look down on the model from, from floating in midair. So we ourselves can float in midair to view a model from above, which I will demonstrate in just a bit. And, and as you can see, I can, like we said earlier, we can scale the models up and down. This is so we can see these, these organs in more detail and see exactly how they all fit together. So here I am showing how the connection to all these organs are going to fit together in the physical model using the virtual model. Now we go looking down on the product. Yeah, virtual reality is, is as close to displaying a product in real life as possible without actually manufacturing it. We can use this tool to really help portray ideas and designs without the cost of producing a physical model in a way that is low carbon and could be easily understood by anyone. So here I am moving around the table to get different looks of the body in, in um, its full assembly. So this has been our next episode in our demonstration series. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. So we're now going to stop for one final poll and some more questions. Brilliant, Jordan. So yes, this next poll then. Um, how interested in virtual reality are you to display concepts, prototypes, and models for your business? So not at all, might be interested or very interested. And while we just got this time as well, I want to say welcome to all the businesses that are uh, watching us around the Aura Innovation Center today as well. We're casting around the building live um, to you all as well. So welcome and thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so please do answer the poll. How interested in virtual reality are you? And we've got a few questions rolling in. So Jordan, do you want to take the rest of this poll? Um, yes. So um, a lot of you are saying you might be interested in virtual reality. It, it's, it's honestly the best tool for product visualization, which is why I left it towards the end you really do get a clear image of how we, um, how we can display these, these products in a way that is both low carbon and also you don't have the need to actually manufacture anything. So it's a lot cost, more cost effective. Brilliant, so um, how easy is VR to use? So virtual reality is incredibly easy to use. It is as simple as putting on a headset and pressing a button. The controllers are very intuitive because they're being designed to be that way. It is pulling, to pick up a component, you literally just have to pull the trigger and it's picked up. To place a control, um, to place a component anywhere, you press the top button and it's, it's frozen in there. Um, you also can use that button to move around. You can also just walk around in person if you don't want, if you, close to the machine or close to the parts. So it's as simple as walking yourself, making sure there's nothing in your way and clicking a few triggers. So we've had a question which links onto what you were saying as well. Um, do we have a, a, a device or a treadmill that you can use to physically allow you to walk around? We do, yes. We use, we have here on offer a treadmill, which we can actually use to walk around further. So usually you're confined to just your area of space. With this treadmill, we can actually walk a lot further. We can do a lot more with this training wise. It's more, it feels more like or closer to the real world than 
what we can get. Brilliant. And how, how accessible is all this technology to people? So this technology through recent developments, are, to be fair, not even that recent, it's, it's become more and more easy to obtain even from home. A lot of your smartphones can be used for virtual reality as well. So your pocket probably already has a device that can already use something like this that we can send to you to view. Brilliant. And then uh, can these models, this is uh, another question we just had in, uh, can these models be used in augmented reality? Um, yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Um, we can use it in augmented reality as well. Um, sorry about that. Right, yes. So we can also use it in augmented reality. So it's a, augmented reality is a great way to display something in the physical world. So we're mixing virtual with physical. So we can, um, but especially for training purposes and machine assemblies, we can we can um, put these things together in the physical world through virtual technologies. Um, so yeah, we can also put these models in in augmented reality as well as virtual reality. So it's a great way, especially for engine manufacturers. A good one that's used quite often where you can physically see the engine in a, a vehicle or, or even just a machine. You could, you could display that machine where it's going to go around machinery that's already there. And you can see where parts will fit together. So I think that's it for the questions. If you have any more questions, please visit us at aura.aic oh aic.aura at whole.ac.uk thank you for everyone who joined us today i look forward to seeing um, all of you next week for our next webinar um, which if i play this you can see our times and dates for our next ones this video will be up on youtube so you can view it uh, whenever you want as well So, um, so yeah, the video uh, should just play onto the next slide. Yes, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So I've got next uh, 3D printing with metals coming up on Tuesday. And then we've got John's final webinar coming up on Thursday, Thursday which is titled um, Product Verification, which would be a very exciting one as well. Much like this one was with all the VR headsets. So I've just got a couple more questions for you, actually. OK. Um, which headsets do you use and what do we have here at the Aura Innovation Center? So the headset I used today for my demonstration was the Vive Pro, which is a very powerful headset. We also have offer um, the Oculus Quest, uh, the Vive Cosmos, which is very similar to the Pro, except it doesn't need the sensors to be mounted around the room. We also have the HoloLens 2, which is our augmented reality headset. Brilliant. And then companies can come in and utilize this kit, can't they, with us as yes. well and get involved? Definitely. Um, all you have to do is email um, aic.aura at hold.ic.uk and book a time slot. Uh, we, there's always headsets available and we have this um, beautiful AR VR room as part of our Invent X, which is what we we're demonstrating today a little bit. So we have all this equipment ready to go, ready for you to rent, hire, and use. Brilliant. And we look forward to welcome, welcoming businesses back into our building as well. So um, thank you again to everyone listening around the building. Um, thank you for joining us and asking us questions and chat. Um, so yeah, I think we'll close the webinar. So thank you very much for Jordan. Thank you. And uh, thank you for joining from myself. And we hope to see you on our next webinar on Tuesday. Thank you for joining us today.